So I think it's very important that more and more people with diverse experiences are able to tell stories based off of their lived experiences to create like that bridge, to create that empathy. Like it, it's the truth part. Because uh, again, another thing that I like about art and I like about cinema is the fact that art bridges the void between one person and another. Like I, I subscribe to the idea that we we all live in our own pocket universe. Like we could be standing next to each other, but our experiences are so personal. And how do we really know what the other person feels? The concept of language to me is magic. The fact that I can like utter sounds and another person completely separate from me understands what I'm trying to say, let alone articulating a feeling let alone articulating an experience. And so people with diverse experiences, having hold of a medium creates interconnectivity in a community. And it's my goal with, one of my goals with art and with cinema to remind people and to create those opportunities for one person to look at another person and just live in their universe for a while. And that might change your perspective and how you approach things. And if it doesn't, you might need to look in the mirror. What if this is all just a dream? My name is Silas Tibbs, and I'm the director, writer, and producer of the film Attrition. And I'm based in Cincinnati, and I'm looking forward to our growing film community here. Uh, the genre of this film is a dystopian sci-fi. It's very Orwellian in nature. The name of the film is Attrition, and that comes from this idea of like a paring away over time, like an erosion over time. Um, the inspiration of this film came from a very unsettling conversation that I had with a college roommate. Uh, I went to college in Oklahoma, and this was during like the height of the Tea Party movement and also around the time that Obama was elected. So being an African-American in the heart of a like solid red state was a very interesting experience. And I faced a lot of perspectives that were more overt, overt than I was used to. And my roommate at the time, uh, there was a lot of, like just to put it frankly, there was a lot of fervor about immigration and there was a lot of anti-immigration and it was a problem that had to be solved. And so my roommate started talking about his concerns <laughs> about uh, immigration. And the with this is kind of spoiler a little bit. So hopefully you've seen <laughs> you've seen the film first. Um, but his solution was, well, let's limit the amount of children that that immigrants can have. And it was one of those moments where I was either going to get mad or help him follow his thought all the way to the end. And so we just kind of had a conversation about, okay, if we did that, what kind of country would we turn into? And the thing that was a little bit unsettling to me about that conversation was the fact that like, we both had our degrees at that time and he had moved on to like his masters. And so we're both two educated men that are gonna go off into the world and like start to navigate where our country goes and that thought was something that occurred to him without any problems or issues. Now fast forward down the line and we see more people like this that are in office. And uh, what started as like a thought experiment is starting to feel more realistic. And so the inspiration of this film comes from two places. It comes from that story, but then it also comes from uh, the, unend well, maybe well-intended consequence of a racist system which can operate without anyone really acknowledging that it's there and it's, a, it's an erosion process. So fighting hard to reach equality in a system, there are people that reach that equality, but how many don't? And it creates a very limiting, um, the higher you go, the fewer and fewer people you find, uh, people of color that are in place of power, that have influence, they can actually like control or help guide where the money goes. So then the higher you go, like there's just not very much representation. And there are systems in place that have this kind of erosive effects, not only on um, just getting places, but also emotionally and physically. There's a lot of like working harder to get 
to a place of equality, a lot of people physically don't make that journey to the end. And like, it's, it's just stuff that we don't really think about. So like this film kind of hints at little things. There's only so much that I can do like in, in 18 minutes <laughs> of film. So there's a lot of like hints in there, but a lot of it comes from like conversations I've had, but then also experiences that I've had, other people's experiences, watching my parents like fight to get us to a different place. Like my parents, they were the first in their family to go to college and their fight to get into college was hell. And then, so then we were second generation to get into college and our fight to get into college was also hell. And there are a lot of people who see that fight and they're like, why? Why would I do that? Especially if it's too expensive. And if like we graduate college, but we don't actually still make the same amount of money, what's the point of that? And that all is attrition, where it makes it harder and harder to progress. And it makes the fight to want to progress feel a little bit hopeless. So I think that that's like a, a, an, um, a perspective that's like well missed in this discussion of equity and inclusion and diversity and, and these kind of places where you look and you're like, well, the opportunities exist, but why are so few people of color in these spaces? Well, the fight to get there is hard and a lot of people don't see the worth of it and some people don't make the journey. So this film, has, it, there's a lot packed in uh, a few minutes. <laughs> I was very grateful to be a recipient of this grant uh, because when I pitched the story, like this, the story is, it could be controversial. And so I appreciate that ArtsWave saw the concept and believed it was something that was worth funding. So I'm very appreciative to have the opportunity to be able to tell this story because of the grant. So the theme for this, uh, this year's grant is truth and healing. And one thing that I believe like very deeply is that we can't skip to healing without truth. And one of the biggest issues that I have with the national dialogue, especially in some places, is the need to want to like soften truth and then kind of like quietly slide to healing. But the, the magnitude of the trauma that's been done to black and brown people and not just African-Americans, but black and brown people just in general in America, I don't think is very well articulated, specifically generationally. And so for this project, and it's as an aspect of my personality, <laughs> just in general, I like to be very, very straightforward. So for me, the conversation starting with truth is the thing that leads to a way to heal intelligently because I, don't like the concept of, of pretending that we've healed, but we've skipped a lot of steps and we've skipped a lot of things that need to be resolved. It's like you, we close up the wound before the surgery is even fully done. So for this project, it's a heavy emphasis on truth and it's an appeal to vig vigilance, not just, for not just for African Americans, but for everyone who watches the film so that we can all start on a level basis, a very level basis, yeah. Um, I fall in love with film because the saying a picture is worth a thousand words is so true. I wanted to be a writer before I wanted to be a filmmaker. And I just found myself writing infinite words, <laughs> essentially, to express like very feelings that are like, very, very, very hard to articulate. But the art of capturing cinema uses pictures in ways that words can't really access to trigger parts of our, of our, our, of our feelings, of our emotions, of our intellect, that kind of thing. So there, there are images in the film that are uh, very intentional and come from a place of experience. You mentioned like the scene of like the couple shaking their hands and like kind of like getting the pass through while this other couple is waiting. Well, that image is not from my imagination. That image is really from, there, there were periods in my family's life where we were getting government assistance. And there's unspoken things that happen where like some families, like they get very, very harsh treatment and other families don't. And I remember moments of watching like my mom sitting there and just being grilled with questions. And that's where a, a lot of like that interview comes from. It comes from memory. So, 
just being grilled with questions, questions that I didn't hear anyone else being asked. And it creates, and uh, also like just seeing varying levels of empathy, where if you're a person of color and you're in government assistance, there's the assumption that, well, you're here because of either laziness or because of something you did wrong. And there's like a lot, a condescending attitude sometimes, and this is not in all cases, because there's a lot of social workers that are very empathetic and that's why they're in the field. But then there's also situations where it's like, why am I going through this? All I want is food for my children. Kind of a thing, like very basic human needs. And we have a government and we go to them for assistance and it feels like we're getting a runaround kind of a thing. And so like images like that come from childhood memory. And like there's a thing in cinema about holding a memory that you have and finding all those like little known, de those like um, those details that we may not think of are important, but they create that texture that will trigger someone else's memory or experience. So just being in that environment, like feeling like you're being talked down to <clears throat> when you're just seeking something that's like basic. Going through, like sitting in a line for hours just to get food for your children. Like these are experiences that a lot of people of color, a lot of people who don't have access to money, um, go through and it's like a story that's untold and it you know there's just I mean we can blame certain people for the idea of the welfare of the welfare queen and how it's just like laziness and like but that is not the case at all like it is a grueling mentally exhausting emotionally exhausting humiliating experience to have to endure some of those things just for basic human rights or just to be able to eat or just to be able to like pay your electric bill or things like that and so a lot of those images came from i mean i could even go into like there was a moment where and this is like getting very very <laughs> very personal like with my dad my dad passed a few years ago and he worked very 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 hard and there was a moment where like we needed like assistance and he was treated as if he was lazy and that to me was infuriating because I knew how hard he worked for us and his family. And like watching people talk to him sideways was like this man, not only could this man break you if he wanted to, and he's being very tame and he's being very controlled for the sake of his family, but like he's probably worked harder than the person across the table. And he's, he probably has an education higher than the person across the table, but because of experiences and because of circumstances, he's had to ask for assistance. And just watching that process and feeling like that erosion vicariously through him, through his response, especially as I get older and experience more and more about life, like I feel him. <clears throat> and a lot of that transposed itself into the images of the film. And I hope that if nothing else, like at least with empathy, like we, it's it's very difficult for another person to like really understand all the in intricacies of something, of someone else's experience. But hopefully, cinema bridging the gap with empathy. That's why I I love close-up shots. Like I love those kind of portrait shots. That's why I open the way that I do with that animation, or even like the first shots. Like I'm intentionally drawing attention to the person to humanity, to bridge that gap to like, I'm kind of playing with like all of our, the buttons in our brain that remind us we're looking at another person. It's not just a film, which is the first line that you have to cross with the audience is, okay, I need them to believe the world. I need them to feel like that they're in this spot. And then you want to bridge the gap between the audience and your protagonist, but there can be a barrier still sometimes with, with ethnicity where it's like, okay, well, I see him, but that's not me. And we want the audience to feel like our protagonist is them. So when they're a person of color, there's a little extra work you have to do to remind the audience, like, this is not a black person. This is not a person of color. This is another person. And then once you have them cinched, then you can carry them through the rest of the story. And that is a very, very difficult thing to do. That's why when you watch movies like Moonlight, like, You'll see with a lot of other like black directors who are above me and who I admire <laughs> right now, they, Ava DuVernay, for example, does this where there's a fixation on the portrait of the face because we all know in the back of our mind, like that's our first real hurdle as filmmakers of color 
in, in a society where we're, where we're the minority, we have to create that human connection unless the story just falls apart. And it's one thing that like, I mean, I grew up and like I'm a child of Star Trek and all of the captains up until one were white males, right? But when I was a child, I didn't care because it was like, these are cool people that run starships, <laughs> you know? And I wonder if that same thing happens on the other side, if it were a black captain, would they go, well, this is not for us. So like, that's the first challenge that any black filmmaker has because we're trying to get to the point where they connect with the protagonist. Now that they connect with the protagonist, they can hear the story that we're trying to tell. So I think it's very important that more and more people with diverse experiences are able to tell stories based off of their lived experiences to create like that bridge, to create that empathy. Like it, it's the truth part because uh, again, another thing that I like about art and I like about cinema is the fact that art bridges the void between one person and another. Like I, I subscribe to the idea that we, we all live in our own pocket universe. Like we could be standing next to each other, but our experiences are so personal. And how do we really know what the other person feels? The concept of language to me is magic. The fact that I can like utter sounds and another person completely separate from me understands what I'm trying to say let alone articulating a feeling, let alone articulating an experience. And so s people with diverse experiences, having hold of a medium creates interconnectivity in a community. And I think that, I think that cinema, art, entertainment has been one of the saving graces of society at large. Without it, we would have fallen apart a long time ago because we have just been so tunnel vision in our own universe. We've just been like clashing into each other. So the more people of color that are able to tell their stories and have funding to tell their stories, I can just tell you that like making a film is a, making a film is a privileged kid's game at the end of the day because the amount of resources you need to be able to effectively tell a story, those resources are not available to a lot of people of color. And even if they get access to those resources in an older age, there's still gonna be a skill gap that they have to cross, as opposed to someone who's had resources, access to those resources at a younger age where like they just do things easily and naturally because they've been able to play with those toys. That creates like a disparity. And so more grants, more funding, more resources given to people who don't have access to those resources earlier on enable, and, and, and this is the other like really, really critical thing with the, with the room to make mistakes because this art form is hard. It's very technical, it's very artistic. There's a lot of ways you can mess up trying to do it. And room to fail is necessary. So getting access to these resources with also, but also being, being given grace to fail so that they can learn and do better next time is critical if we want more diverse stories and experiences to be told, which again is critical if we want the fabric of our society to stay cinched together. Because right now we're at a point which I find disturbing where there, there are people who benefit from siloing off the population. Because when we're siloed off, it's easier to control siloed sex of people than it is to control everyone who's aware <laughs> at the same time. So I think right now it's even more critical to give platform to people with diverse experiences so that we can help keep this chaos <laughs> from getting worse. Uh, if I want people watching this to remember one thing, this is the one thing I want them to remember. And this is just generally, and this is like the goal of art for me, but look at another person and live in their universe. And that to me would solve a lot of problems if we approach with empathy and compassion. And it's my goal with, one of my goals with art and with cinema to remind people and to create those opportunities for one person to look at another person and just live in their universe for a while. And that might change your perspective and how you approach things. And if it doesn't, you might need to look in the mirror.